Howdy. Happy late evening. Wish anybody happens to be on. Hopefully this um, signal I've got is good enough to keep it going uh, while I record this thing. So, um, uh, it's been about three months since I tied a fly on here and i um, been missing it. So, just trying to be, uh, try to be thinking about some new flies to tie and things like that and different things to try out, uh, different ways to just uh, kind of refresh and make some new stuff. So, um, back before Christmas, or three months ago, I guess, uh, I had gotten some new fly tying materials, and I kind of showed them on one of my videos. I got uh, some different colors of thread, and I got some different colors of some tinsel, some flash tinsel. And so I thought that I would, um, well, I tied a fly with some of the tinsel, which I was um, okay with, I guess. Um, didn't function really the way I wanted it to, but I think I can work with it. Um, I just tied um, one like this. It's got, you can barely see them, but it's got some bead chain eyes. And it's got some flash and slinky tail, pretty springy. And then it's got this uh, tinsel, which is what I'm going to tie with today. But um, it's a different color. What I'm going to use today is a different color than that. So um, go ahead and get started. I'm just going to do kind of a woolly booger sort of pattern. Bead chain. Um, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what to call it anymore. But uh, yeah. So let me turn this around and we'll get going on this thing. Pardon my really, really... Um, nasty fly tying area. I've got all kinds of junk up here. Most of it I use for fly tying. Um, there is a pill box back there. I do not have pills in that. That is for old flies that I collect and also the Eclipse gum with <laughs> Eclipse secret footage. Um, <laughs> I've, I promise. I've got old flies in there that I use. I uh, pull them out and cut the materials off and reuse the flies or the, the tying materials off of them. And there's various and sundry other things hanging around there. But for now, I'm just going to get after this fly here. So, all right. Got a nice background there. Got centered. Been a while since I've done this, like I said. About three months. Uh, I had to fix my phone holder here. I record these on my phone on Facebook and then I save them and put them on YouTube. You can check them out QuietMan28 uh, on Yahoo, uh, on YouTube um, to see this is, I think this will be number video number 85 maybe somewhere around there. Anyway, let me get started because I've watched some videos where people sit there and yap and don't actually get started doing the thing they're doing. All right, so I'm uh, gonna start off with um, some olive. Unithread, eight aught, it's olive, done. Uh, one of the colors in this, of these two that I've got here, I'm gonna use the olive that I got. And I've got this flash that's uh, kind of iridescent, pearl kind of colors. And then I'm going to use one of my um, olive schlappen feathers around the head. And then I've got marabou for the tail and a piece of wire laying down in there. And we'll get going. So I've had some uh, good increase in... Um, in viewership and in subscribers so thank you subscribers those that are subscribing to me I don't put this out here for um, any monetary reasons I just like to tie flies um, I don't fly fish very much right now and that's just because of kind of where we're living and the I haven't gone out and searched out 
places to fish. So in the stead of fishing, I have been tying flies. So these are all flies that I would fish with or that I have fished with in the past. I've talked about this before. But this is just a way to kind of be in it without being in it. I'm just going to go ahead and throw down a base here. I like to educate people when I'm tying. Um, and if you watch all my videos, it's kind of a broken record because I say the same things all the time. But for those people that pick up on fly tying for the first time, maybe they come to my video. I don't want them to not know what I'm doing. Um, you know, if you think about like a student coming into a classroom who's never been in that classroom before and the teacher's talking about stuff that that kid's never learned, they're forever not knowing where they are and lost. And if you're picking up this for the first time and you're wanting to try fly tying, um, I want you to know what I'm doing and why, um, regardless of how many videos I've set it on. Because you can teach somebody one time and they probably won't get it. You teach them again, they still won't get it. You teach them a third time, you think they've got it, they still don't have it. Um, fortunately, fly tying is very forgiving and you can you know, pick up tricks here and there to do different things and you may come up with your own tricks that you can teach somebody else. Uh, in this case, I'm just doing stuff that I learned on YouTube when I learned how to fly fish and fly tie. Um, from Dave Camus and various other people. Dave Camus was the one that I watched the most at first, though. So thank you, Dave Camus. I hope you're still doing well. Um, never met you. You're over over the pond. But anyway, I uh, use a lot of your techniques and um, things like that. And some of your, um, your flies were the first ones that I tied. So what I'm doing here, uh, just like I was going off of the um, descriptions. So basically I lay down a base line of thread that you just wrap all the way up, usually to the bend of the hook. Sometimes it changes depending on the flyer tying. But um, I also did a kind of a lump here with a little groove and then a lump here again. And that's a place where whenever I put my bead chain eye there, it's gonna keep it from moving forward and backward because there's a bump, kind of like a speed bump. Um, the the portion of the thread that's on the hook back here makes the hook not be slick so that when you put these slippery feathers in place and you tie them down it gives it something to grip to it's kind of like having sandpaper or um, grip tape on a skateboard it gives you a rough surface so you don't slip off because uh, some of those materials really are slick enough that you can tie the fly and then you pull on it and the stuff just comes out we don't want that to happen because fish like to bite that stuff and then they pull them out. Then you have a fly that doesn't have a tail anymore or something like that. Uh, so the next thing that I'm going to add, um, so you, if you have, um, this is something I like to add to a lot of my flies. If you have a ceiling fan and you have this bead chain hanging down that you pull, you can cut a little bit of that off. And then from that you cut a piece that is just two pieces with the the wire still in the middle and then if you have that you can lay it down on top of the hook so that the two um, the two balls straddle the hook shank and what I'm doing is tr I'm taking the thread between the eyes here and then I'm going to go the other way, make an X underneath, and go the other way. And basically what I want to do is just build this up so that, so that they get more, more uh, rigid. Um, I have found sometimes in, the, in my past flies, I'm going to go ahead and leave this one this way, but sometimes I find that I get this too far back and I don't like the look of it. So it just depends on how it finishes up. Um, We'll see. Uh, right now I'm just going to leave it because I've already started it. So I just keep going here, several turns this way, cross it and go several turns this way. Um, you can also see that this ball, these things are put together by crushing the thing around the wire. And so this one actually has a little rough edge where the seam is. 
be careful of that when you're going around with your threads because you can hit that and it'll actually, if your thread's thin enough, it'll actually cut the thread. You don't want that to happen. It's no big deal if it does, you just tie it back in, but it's just annoying. So um, take a few turns here, go under, take a few turns here. I'm actually gonna do some turns like this. So I'm going under the ball, over the shank, under the ball, over the shank back and forth and then I'll do some more turns across and basically you just want to build this up so that there's not I mean it doesn't really matter that much but so that there's a, a lump of thread um, in between the eyes and sometimes I'll even build it up so that the the thread makes a cuff up around the ball of the the eyeball <laughs> Another th cool thing about these bead chains is um, because of the hole that's in them, it actually gives them an eyeball shape with a, you know, the, with the retina or whatever. So um, <clears throat> it's kind of cool, kind of an automatic deal. And one thing that I will do um, with that edge once I'm done, I usually come in with clear nail polish and I put a dab of clear nail polish over the hole. Um, that'll do two things. If I have a rough edge here like I do, um, it will cover that rough edge with nail polish so it's not so rough. And then it also keeps that thing from filling up with water. Um, so that is not, I don't know if that's a big deal or not, but anyway, here we go. So My next step is I'm going to tie in my marabou tail. So marabou is very fluffy stuff. You'll see this on, um, what do you call those? A boa, feather boa. This is the stuff that makes that up. Sometimes you'll have fancy hats or whatever things that are fluffy. Um, and this is what that is. It's just part of the feather. Um, or it's a feather in and of itself. So what I'm going to do, this is a very fluffy thing, and I can either tie it in and pull through. Some people will do it like that. They'll tie it in there, and then they'll use this to wrap around the body. I'm not doing that because I'm using other stuff for the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick a point where I like to tie it in. And then if I don't like the length, I can just come in and break it off. And I think that's what I'll do. So let me start with tying this in. So I need to run my thread back. And I just do that by just turning it until I get where I want it. And in this case, I'm going to go... So you have the the point of the hook you have the barb of the hook and often the barb of the hook is about where the bend starts and I'll just go back to where that bend starts right there almost to the bend and then I'll just take my materials I know where I want it to be basically is about right there so I'm gonna lay it down and pinch it there and then I'm going to just drop my thread down. What I do is I pinch the thread and then I wrap around holding the thread and then when I get to the bottom where I want it and I pull down on it. And then I want to pull up on this material to keep it from um, from falling off the top of the hook. Uh, I just had to back off a couple of turns there because I didn't realize I was wrapping it around the hook point also. You probably saw that in the video but I couldn't see that very easily. So when you wrap around, you kind of got to avoid the point of the hook by swinging your thread out like that. Okay, so I'm just taking a few turns here to get this solid. And I like to take a turn or two underneath the tail, but still on top of the hook. So I'll go over the hook here and then under the tail, back to where I was. And that kind of helps just get it from a couple of sides so it locks it down. And then I don't want all this, I don't really, well, I guess I could use this bulk still. I'm going to cut this off here. Make sure I've got it short enough that it's not going to overlap the eyes there. I'm just going to trim this off. Sometimes fly tying can get a little 
some messy fluff floating around, but I think we'll be good. And then I'm just gonna throw some wraps over this to bind it down on top of the hook. It doesn't have to be perfect. Eventually you'll get enough wraps on there that it'll all lay down and it'll build up some bulk on your body there. I probably should have made that come all the way to the front. I'm not too worried about it. It's going to have a lot of fluff on it. So I'll fix this later, um, but you can just take, you can bring this back like this. You can actually wet your fingers with some spit and just bring it back and it'll help it lay down the way so you can see kind of what it looks like when it's in the water. This is not quite enough, but you can get the idea. It'll pull back like this. And then you can take this and get it, a lot of people like it to be about the length of the hook on this side. So you can take this and just break it off. And then you have a fluffy tail that's the length. And if you want to come back with your scissors, you can trim off the pieces that didn't break off. Like that these extras here not too worried about it like I said once they once it gets wet it lays down pretty well um, okay so I've got that in there I'm gonna go ahead and tie in my wire also I'm just gonna start about where my threads laying it's not really important where it starts as long as you got enough wraps on it to hold it in place okay there's that and then I don't need to tie this feather in until I get to the eyes with everything, but I do need to tie these in. But I need to prep these before I tie them. So these things have um, at the top here on this paper, it's kind of a cardstock, and they have it just starting right. Here. Sorry, have it starting in that groove right there. You just pop that out. I'm just going to take a few turns off of it, and then just put it back where it was, and cut it off. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the green one and try to get two lengths that are the same. Just so that they're, so I'm using them equally. Just going to match the two ends up. <clears throat> get these where they're about the same length and cut them. And then just for the sake of organization, I'll go ahead and put this back the way it was on the cut there. And I'll just put these in my drawer because I'm done with them for this fly. Now, <clears throat> I've got this, this twisting tool here that is made for um, building your own hackle. Uh, if you want to do like a brush basically it's like making one of these things but bigger scale and using feathers or using fur or some kind of material you take two strings and you or a loop of string and you hold this hold it with this then you stick in the materials that you want and then you twist it and then it flares everything out so um, I'm gonna do essentially do the same thing with this I'm gonna take these two pieces and I want to twist them together, so I'm going to tie the end off so that they'll hold on that tool. See, I've got that. Okay, got that there. So I've got them tied together now. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to take this actually the way it is and just tie it in now. So I'm just going to lay it across the body of my fly and just make wraps going forward. And I've cut it to length so that it comes right up to the back of the eye there. Take a few extra turns here just to bind everything down smoothly. And I'm going to come up to where I want to tie off back here at the back of the head, the back of the eyes. And then I'm going to take my materials here and you can't really see this, but I'm going to use this tool. So 
So I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, basically, you put it through this part and you just turn it. And it twists the two parts together. So I'm just going to turn these two together. Go the other way. And it makes these two different colors of uh, sparkle mixed together. I will say that the green is not really coming up very well and the white thread is showing more than I want it to. So um, that might be my issue on this one with using the white with the, with the uh, pearl flash on it. Maybe you should just do this with two pieces of the green. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm just turning it enough times that hopefully the green thread will mix in enough with the white thread that it doesn't show too bad. And then I'm just going to take this and wrap it forward. Twisted it enough. And I'm just going to do touching turns here. Yeah, see the, the white is kind of outdoing the green here. And that's kind of what I was concerned about. But you know what, it's giving it some segmented look. Kind of hard to see with that light, but you can see the white line making loops. Um, and I'll just, when I get up here to the back of the head, I'll just make some extra turns to fill in that space where I didn't put enough feathers. Just go back a couple of times. It's not turning out exactly the way I wanted it to, but you know what? It is what it is. So, lesson learned there. Don't mix a light in a dark color if you want the fly to look dark. Because, <laughs> guess what? The light one is going to stand out more. Uh, so, I'm just going to wrap this and cut this off here. So, that's that. Still got some sparkle. And I could probably come in with a, like a dark marker, like an olive marker, or a, I don't think I have olive, but even black would help, or brown. Uh, but let me see, I'm going to take some turns here, just to make sure I bind that stuff down. Uh, then I'll wrap my, I'm going to wrap my wire. So I wrapped this way in a clockwise motion around the hook and I'm going to take the wire and go the opposite direction so that it crosses those those wraps and that'll make sure that it binds that down really well just make several turns and then I get there to the eyes and I'm just going to wrap against that I can even pull this back over and wrap over and so that way I come in and I make a turn and then I'm tying down that bend so that it can't pull out of there. And I'm just going to take this and you can helicopter it off and it just breaks right off. You don't have to cut it because that takes the time to pick up your scissors and cut and it also takes the time to, um, or it dulls your feather, your, um, it dulls your scissors. All right, uh, my last step here before I finish is going to be to tie in this feather. Uh, this is called a schlappen, 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 whatever it's called. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but that's what it said on the package. And I want to, I'm going to cut this off and use that piece. So what I, what what you have when you have these feathers is all the all these barbs on the feather are pointing this way and everything is smooth so you grab it at the end and go your fingers opposite of that and it makes everything stand out um, in a perfect world and then you can also pull those things that direction and they come off and that gives you a shank of the feather to work with the shaft of the feather so I'm going to take that now and I'm going to lay it across the side of the hook and go across that with my thread three turns 
I'm going to pull my thread back here and cut off this stump so it's nice and clean. And then I've got, uh, here we go, hackle pliers. These are specific pliers made to wrap around, uh, to wrap, help you wrap the feather around the hook. So you just clip it on the end and you can put your finger through there. Just be careful because feathers are easy to snap off. And you'll get them wrapped about the way you want them and then they'll snap and come unraveled. And then when you wrap it again, they don't always look the same. These Schlopton feathers are really, really buggy looking. Um, the It's not like a typical hackle because uh, it's not a hackle at all. It's some other kind of feather. But um, the the barbs that stick up are much more meaty and they're they stay apart better or worse however you want to look at it you know what kind of look you're going for so i'm just taking some turns here and i'm trying to work it through the feather so that it's not binding down any of these barbs and i'm going to take this and hold it up and snip it off hopefully without getting any of the barbs or the um, the thread. I'll just break that off instead. There it goes. Sometimes when feathers break, they break after or the, before the point that you tied them, and then they don't. They come unraveled again. I think this actually kind of looks cool. I think it's going to work out. So I'm trying to hold these feathers back. So I can get a good few turns right here behind the eyes. And then I'm going to go through the eyes again a few times, like I did at the beginning. And then several turns here at the nose. I want to kind of build that up just a touch. And again, what I was saying at the beginning, be careful of your thread crossing those eyes and being cut doesn't happen too often but it does happen so all I'm doing here is just taking several turns to kind of get a cone shape in front of this it's just the way I like them but often I will just tie this very close to the front and it just gives it a more refined look um, anyway these do pretty well uh, in the water so I picked kind of a cruddy feather here um, it's got a lot of short stumpy ones and a lot of just different lengths it'll be fine in the water and just you know aesthetics for on the vise um, they don't it doesn't look great but that's okay it'll be fine to fish with so now I've got to this point um, I could have added some flash tied to the body so that this sparkle continued into the tail um, but I just didn't choose to do that this time. That's the beauty of tying flies. Just add in two threads of something to make it different, and it becomes your own design. <laughs> Mix it up in your own way. Somebody has probably tied it before, but you never know. So I'm going to take my whip finishing tool. So there's a... I was talking about Dave Camus earlier. I learned my, t my fly tying from him, and he taught um, tying off using your finger and tying around your finger a couple of turns and doing all this thing and then you pull off and you cut off your um, your bobbin and then you have this thread hanging there but you end up wasting quite a bit of thread I think um, I would look in my in my trash pile and find threads and I'd actually think I did a video maybe I did of trying to tie a complete fly with just trash pieces out of my <laughs> out of my little trash can that's under my vise. Um, whip finishing tool keeps you from having to do that when you where you cut off the string is where the the fly ends and the way you do that is by you take this tool and you it has a hook on the front and then you wrap it around this bump back here and then you lay it here against the hook and what you're doing is you're taking the piece that you first went through the hook with and you're actually using that part to wrap the thread against itself right here so you see the turns I'm taking where the 
part that's coming through the hook on the tool is wrapping around the thread that's going laying on the tool and then so you take your turns and then when you're done and you unhook from the back now you're just using this to pull the slack through and it's tied against itself there and then you just I just broke it off which I don't like to do but I just did and it broke off right where it needed to and it's not coming untied and if usually you'll do a couple of whip finishes and then you're done um, or the other way that I learned from Dave Camus and it'll be done as well I've got some <laughs> I wish that I had more clear nail polish I've got this clear nail polish that is has gotten old and it's really goopy I use this for my varnish for my heads as you can see it is very thick but I just knocked some of this off and I can still use it and all I'm going to do is go over my threads here with this stuff and just get some on the threads and like I've said before and like I said at the beginning I will take old flies and I will cut off the old materials and reuse them but one thing that I always have to do is whenever I do those flies I never just unravel the string I always have to cut the string off because of all the wraps and because of the the paint and because of the knots I you can't just take it off usually you have to cut it off so I'm this is very messy paint because it's so old I need to get rid of it and get some new stuff um, if I'm tying with black thread I'll use the black I'll use my black nail polish instead but I don't want this to be that dark so I'm gonna go ahead and do like I said earlier and cover up this eyeball the hole on the eye a little bit yeah this paint is really bad Oh well I'm not even gonna bother with that I'll just leave it that leave it be so that's the spot where I would then use the the same paint to cover up the eye the hole there and kind of keep that from being so rough but you get the idea so this is um, mixing uh, mixing green flash and some pearl flash twist them together I've got mar uh, olive marabou tail and then an olive feather for the eye for the back of the head which gives it some body when it's in the water and then bead chain eyes and this is kind of a just another olive and pearl woolly booger I guess I really don't know if this really counts as a woolly booger but that's the way I like to tie them so it's a bead chain fly anyway uh, that's my fly and let's see if I can get a little bit better final image there hope you enjoyed watching if you watched I know that the video was cutting in and out because my connection is junk in this room, but that's okay. Um, it's a pretty cool looking fly, even though the white thread's showing. But it would definitely fish, I think. I think it would do fine to catch some fish. So, there we go. Thank you for watching. Um, check out some of my other videos, Quiet Man 28 on YouTube. Um, I know I I tie, I'm tying this right now on Facebook, but I always save it and and send it to, to YouTube and put them on there. I've got about 85 videos now, uh, so check it out. I've got a bunch of stuff like this. If you like these flies, I like learning about how to tie them. They are long, but that's fine because <laughs> I'm long-winded and describing everything. So have a good late evening, and good to see Nerissa and Jeremy watching my cousin and my friend from work and um hopefully some other people tune in and check it out and have a great and blessed evening